I'm here with the DartmouthSports.com Male Athlete of the Week, Matt Danilak. He's a junior on the men's soccer team. Thanks for being with us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. And last week, the Big Green clinched their third consecutive Ivy League title with a 2-0 victory over Brown. And you've been a member of all three of those teams. How does it feel to be a three-time champion? It's just it's really a great feeling to kind of make history like that. No one's ever no no other Dartmouth team has done that before, and we're just all of us on the team are just truly honored um, and blessed to get to be able to be three-time champions. It's been an incredible feeling. And Dartmouth has been playing some of its best soccer in the last month or so. How does the team take it one game at a time each week? Um, we we have really been picking it up lately. We feel really confident lately, but we know. Um, Late in the season and tournament time, it's got to be one step at a time, one practice at a time, one game at a time. And Coach Riley's really good at making sure we're focused on, you know, that day and not thinking too far ahead or not thinking thinking back. So, And finally, the Big Green will host St. Francis Brooklyn in the first round of the 2016 College Cup at Burnham Field on Thursday at 5 p.m. What does the outlook look like for this Thursday? We know it's going to be a tough game. Um, every game in the tournament is a really tough game, but... At the same time, we're really confident that, that we can win the game. Um, we know it's going to be a battle, um, but, but we're confident, so hopefully we'll get the win. All right, Matt, thank you very much, and good luck on Thursday. Thanks a lot. I'm here now with the DartmouthSports.com Female Athlete of the Week, Eleni Tabano, a senior alternate captain on the women's hockey team. Congrats to you and the team so far this season. This weekend, Dartmouth went 1-1 one one at home, falling to number 8 Quinnipiac 2-1 on Friday before defeating number 10 Princeton 3-2 in overtime on Saturday. You had a goal in both games, including the OT winner with 50 seconds to go against the Tigers. Talk about the play you put together with Morgan Turner and the moment you realized the puck had gone in. Yeah, um, I don't know. Hockey's always been a game of white moments for me, and I think that was one of my white moments. I just sort of uh, went into the boards, got that puck, I saw Morgan cutting off the middle, and I knew if I bumped that off the board, she would get it. Um, and the puck was sort of bobbling in the middle of the ice, and I don't know, it hit my stick and sort of went in. Um, and that's just sort of how it happened. I'm glad it happened. <laughs> how have the freshmen been adjusting to collegiate hockey, and how have they grown over the first month of the season? Um, I think they've grown a lot, um, and they're definitely a big part of the team. Uh, there's seven of them, and I think they've grown really close with a lot of the girls um, and grown close to each other. Um, I also think that, I mean, Christina Rombo, she had two, she's had two goals so far um, this season, and so I think that is indicative of how much of a part of the team they are and everything. What are your personal goals for your final season? Um, I really want to be um, a good leader. Um, for everyone on the team, um, not just the younger kids, but also um, just everyone on the team. Um, and I'd like to be more confident on the ice and um, be confident in the way that I hold the puck, carry the puck, distribute the puck, um, and I think that will make a difference throughout the whole season. Dartmouth will next head to Orono for a pair of games against Maine on November 28th and 29th. Thanks and good luck. Thank you.